Welcome back to Change Coach Conversations. This is number nine, how to deal with difficult clients. So at some point, I think all coaches feel like they have a difficult client, maybe quite a few, like I felt that I had. We might feel like someone's a difficult client because they have some really tough circumstances, maybe things like, you know, dealing with the loss of a child or they're in the middle of a huge life change that from your perspective as a coach, you have no idea how you would get through that or how to help them get through that. That can lead them to look like a difficult client. Maybe they feel like a difficult client because they are argumentative. My favorite. (laughs) I love when clients argue, but you know, it can feel difficult. Maybe they um, are a little defensive. They're a little angry or they're, you know, just seem like they want to argue with what you say and they're not really all that open. That can feel like a difficult client. So there are a lot of ways that clients can appear difficult to us as coaches. And when this is the case, any of those, it doesn't matter what the reasoning is. When a client looks like a difficult client to you, there is one thing going on always without exception every time. And that is that you are in your own thinking about this. So there is no such thing really as a difficult client. Our experience of that comes not from their circumstances, not from their argumentativeness, not from their defensiveness or anger or closeness. Those are just, that's just what's showing up. That doesn't have to be difficult. You know, if someone is in a tough circumstance or they're very closed, why why would that lead us to feel like they're a difficult client? What we're feeling is our own thinking. What we're feeling is usually our own caught upness in what's going on, our own blind spots. Often what we're feeling, and I know for me, I used to feel this a lot, what I was feeling was my own insecurity. I would have someone that would argue back a little bit or not really be seem super open to what I was sharing. And I just took that personally, as I think a lot of coaches naturally would. I thought, oh my gosh, am I, am I not doing this right? Am I not explaining it right? Can I not get through to this person? Which sometimes we can't. That's not on us. You know, that was change coach conversation number two, I think, or three. Sometimes we're not going to, and that's not a problem either. That's it's just what we do. But when that looks like they're difficult and this is a problem and something's wrong, that's just us being caught up in our own insecurity and our own thinking. Or maybe, um, you know, often what I think happens is they're facing something big and we're taken back by it. Like, oh my gosh, I don't know how to help someone who's just lost a child or who just lost their job or who's, you know, partner just walked out after 30 years together And we get caught up thinking that we need to somehow solve or fix things for them. And again, we never do. That is never, ever our job, ever. We can't if we want to. We couldn't if we wanted to. It's just not our job. Our job is to be with them and let their own health and their own answers and their own resilience come up. And we do that in this one-to-one dance and this conversation with someone as we're just there seeing their health not seeing their difficulty. That's our thinking in the way, seeing their health, no matter what's going on and letting whatever's there on the surface, their grief, their fear, their defensiveness, their anger, letting that be there. It's just, it's just thought and feeling. It comes and goes. We talk about it. We point it out. We can look right at it with them. We can help them see it for what it is, but ultimately it never touches their health. So I think especially in this understanding too, um, because it is, you know, different and new and it's, it's different from how a lot of other coaches and and practitioners work. Um, people can get new coaches can get a little shaken when someone doesn't seem that open to it. Like, Oh, what are they going to be offended? I hear this all the time. They're going to, they're going to think I'm cold. If I tell them they're feeling, they're thinking they're going to be offended if, if they're suffering so much and I tell them they have health. And again, we just have to keep seeing that is our thinking. That is our fear. That is our insecurity. Don't put that on them. That is not on them at all. That's our stuff coming up. And by and large, people do not get offended when you see their health. (laughs) They do not think you're cold for holding space with them and being with them in their experience, but not saying, oh my God, you poor thing, you must be destroyed. That's not helpful. That's not helpful to anyone. And truly, this just takes our own practice. So 
I mean, just in the six months of the training that I do with people, I see this shift so much. There's all this hesitation up front. And then we just get in these conversations and we're pointing in a helpful way. And you just see firsthand that they don't, that people don't aren't offended by that. It's helpful to them and that it's not helpful for anyone for us to fall and wallow in their misery with them, you know, and, and that we, we hold that in a very kind, loving way. So we absolutely know what it means to be human and to suffer. We all have felt that. And we're going to keep pointing toward the truth. And that is a, that's what they're paying us for. I mean, that is where our work comes in. It's where we're helpful. So if it looks like you have difficult clients, again, it did for me early on, it looked to me like if someone was not open to this or they didn't know this understanding or they were going to argue or be defensive, that was difficult. Just just be curious about that. Recognize the role of your own thinking. And I can tell you now, honestly, I think time and experience take takes care of this for sure. Because now I work with people who are objectively far more troubled, going through much bigger things, and, and they just don't look difficult at all. If anything, it's challenging. And the cool thing is when someone is kind of closed, not that open or argue or, you know, arguing and that type of thing. I, I mean, sometimes those are the most fun. It's for sure the most challenging. And often those clients are the ones that we get to see the most change happen in. But it's not going to happen if you retreat into your own fear and insecurity. So we just want to keep deepening our grounding. As our experience and our grounding deepens, as it will as you start coaching and as you train to be a coach, they will not look difficult anymore. They will look like scared and hurting. And and we all know exactly what that feels like because we've all been there. So I hope this is helpful and gives you a new way to think about difficult clients. Um, And if you want to learn this, and again, deepen your grounding to where you don't see these things as difficult. You just see them as someone caught up in psychology. You don't, it doesn't feel so personal. Uh, Do it (laughs) because it's, it's amazing. Your own grounding will deepen. Your understanding will grow in ways you can't even imagine. And you'll be able to be in these conversations in a super effective way. So let me know if you'd like to talk about the training that's starting soon.